Hello, my name is Becky Thorpe, Curriculum Manager at Matrix TSL. In this video, I'm going to be looking at creating a variable, and I'm going to do that by making an LED counter. So to start off with, I need a new project, and I'm going to go with the no chip option because I'm going to just work within the simulation of flow code. And now I can see that I've got my flowchart area, I've got my 3D system panel, and over here is where I'm going to make my variable, but I'm going to do that later on. So to start off with, I need a output because I need an LED array. Looking down, here it is. Right click that, add to 3D system panel, and that should give me a nice set of eight LEDs over here. Now, I need my loop icon, which is here. And if you're unfamiliar with these, if you hover over the icons, it does remind you what you've got here. And I want a, a loop here. So what that means is any code that I put within that loop will continue um, on and on indefinitely. And that's what I want to do today. I need an output, which is here. There's my output. Click and drag that. And now it's telling me from the text at the side that there is a zero um, value going to port A. And I can see over here I've got some LEDs that are on port B. So while I remember, I'm going to change the output to go to the same port as my LEDs. I'm going to leave the value of zero there, and I'm, I'm going to OK that and leave that for now. If I ran that now, nothing would happen because I've got a value of zero going to the LEDs. Now, we're going to look at making um, a variable today. So over here, where it is um, prompted here to make the variables, I can right click on here and add a new variable. Now, the idea of a variable is quite difficult sometimes for people to get their head around. Um, it's a little bit like a box or a container. It's a value that we don't know what it is yet. It's a value that can change. So I'm going to give my new variable a title. I'm going to call it count. Now it's not actually counting, it's just the name I'm giving to it because I'm going to use that variable to count. But it, I could have called it anything. I could have called it absolute anything. So my initial value, I'm going to give a zero because I'm going to start from zero. Um, it's defaulted to a byte as my type of variable here, um, but I could change that to different things if I was working with a different project. But for what I'm doing here, I'm happy with the byte. I'm going to OK that, and that you can see here, it's given me um, a text to tell me that I've got a variable there called count. So now, in my output icon, if I double click that, instead of changing my value to something like a one, two, three, I can actually select my variable. So now, whatever value is in my variable, whatever value is in my container, if you like, will be sent to my LEDs. Now, at the moment, there's nothing in it. So if I run that, still we'd have nothing happening. So now, I need to make a calculation to change the value that's going to be in that variable. So at the bottom here, I can see my calculation icon. If I click and drag that, I can now open that up by double clicking and I can write um, in there my calculation. Now, because I want to count and I want to count up in ones, I'm going to write in here that my count is going to be equal to my count plus one. And I'm going to OK that. So now, looking at what I've got, we go to the loop. Whatever is in the variable count would be sent to the LEDs. It then goes to my calculation, and it adds one to my count. And then it goes back round and it sends that value to the LEDs. It will add another one, it will go back round, and it send that to the LEDs. So I'm going to OK that, I'm going to save that, sorry. Um, my LED, oh, LED counter, I'll call it here. I've already set that up. Prompting me, do I want to replace that? Yes, that's fine. 
So now, if I run that, we can see that it is running, but very, very, very quickly. Okay. I'm going to get rid of this here because we don't need that for, for now. That does come up while we're, while we're running on in simulation mode, but I'm going to be looking at working with that in another video. So at the moment, you can see it is counting, but very, very quickly. So I'm going to stop that and I can do something about that. I can slow that down. So here is my delay icon. I can open that. At the moment, it's defaulted to milliseconds. I have a choice between microseconds, milliseconds and seconds. Um, there are a thousand milliseconds in a second. So I'm going to go with 500 milliseconds, which is half a second. That should slow that down. And there we can see it's counting. It's counting in binary. So the value of this one is 1, 2, 4, 8, 16, and so forth towards the end. So we're actually counting in binary there on my simulation. So that's quite nice. A little bit slow, we can speed that up. Uh, if we go with about 300 there, you'll see how that would change to go a little bit quicker. Okay, so now on my um, variable, going back to the variable, you can change that afterwards, you can edit it. Um, in order to explain a little bit what I'm trying to do here with the variable, um, if I double click on that, I can change that name, if you like, to absolutely anything. If I changed it to a simple X and I okayed that, it does change that within my program. And now, if, if you're familiar with maths, um, that might read a little bit more familiar. So here in my calculation, for instance, it says x equals x plus 1. And it's sending that value of x to port B. Now, that looks good. You might be thinking, well, why don't you use it like that all the time? When a program gets more complicated, if you've got x's and y's everywhere, it can get quite confusing. So it's good practice to call it something to do with what it's actually doing. Um, again, to make a bit of a point, if I, I can call that absolutely anything. If I'm a bit silly with it, if I call it matrix, for instance, go with that, you can see that works as well. It doesn't matter what you call it because it's just, it's, it's just a name. So I think I'll go back to calling it uh, count because that's better practice there. And now again, I can save that. Okay, that. And if I run that, that's fine. That runs nicely. Okay. So I hope that clarifies a few things towards the variable, maybe explains it a bit simpler than you might have seen it explained before. Um, just to clarify though, before I go, what I have done today is a global variable. Um, if you do have a, a look around here, you'll see different icons along here. I can have a local variable. So if you end up doing uh, more programming, you might end up with a flowchart within a flowchart. Where And when you're doing that, you might want to just have a local variable. And that means that that value would just be within that particular flowchart. If you have a global variable, which is what we've done today, that value would stay throughout all of your flowcharts. So I hope that's been useful. I hope it might have helped to understand the idea of variables. Thank you for listening. Bye bye.